Hello, Dumelang, San Bonani, Molueni, and a warm welcome to the Maths Genius Video Tutorial Series brought to you by SABC Education. In these tutorials, we help you unleash the mathematical genius in you by showing you key mathematical concepts and how you can master them for success like a true genius. Today we're going to be looking at proportion. As you know, a lot of people use the statement, let's not blow things out of proportion. What do they mean? It means that if somebody is reporting on a case, for example, and they are exaggerating, so that means that their story compared to the truth is different. So it means that with proportion, there's an element of comparison. You're comparing one quantity to another. So we use proportion on a daily basis in our lives when we go out to the shops to buy, when we go out and do any transaction of any sort. For example, if, I, if I'm to ask you and say, if one orange costs one rand, how much do 10 oranges cost? I know this is a basic uh, question which you can do with your eyes closed. But here, you're actually using the idea of proportion without you even really recognizing the idea. So, putting it mathematically now, we're saying one orange implies that you're going to pay one rand. Ten oranges imply that you're going to pay more money, right? So because that, then when the number of oranges increases, the, number of, uh, the amount of money you pay also increases. That means that the, the cash and the number of oranges are directly proportional. Increasing the other also increases the other one. So when we say more, what do we, how much is more, right? How much is more? So we're going to say 10 oranges over 1, so it's oranges, divided by 1 orange times 1 rand, which is equal to, so these two cancel out, so it's 10 times 1, which is 10 rand. So this you do on a daily basis, but you don't even acknowledge the fact that you're actually doing proportion. So there are two types of proportions. This one, which we've done where increasing the number of oranges increases the amount of money, this is called direct proportion. Direct proportion. Direct proportion, right? So think of something else that might be direct proportion. Do you have any examples? Think about it in your everyday life. I have another example. I can say, if I increase the amount of bad food, then my weight will increase. Right. So, this is also another direct proportion, where you're looking at amount of bad food and you're comparing it to weight. So the more you eat bad food, the more you are likely to increase in weight. So that means an increase in bad food results in an increase in weight. A decrease in the amount of bad food might actually lead to a decrease in weight. So I believe that these two are directly proportional. So you look for examples where you can talk about direct proportion, right? And when you're conceptualizing it mathematically, when you're talking mathematically, you're actually just saying, if one orange is one rand, how much are 10 oranges? 
the same denominator, the same units, so 10 divided by 1 times that, times the 1 rand, and you'll get your answer. So this is direct proportion. The other type of proportion now is called inverse proportion or indirect proportion, right? Inverse proportion or indirect proportion, right? Now, when we're talking about indirect proportion, we're saying increasing the other decreases the other quantity. For example, increase in exercise reduces weight. So we're saying that if you increase your exercise, your weight will, will, what? will reduce. So in other words, it's like that like that. So that's inverse relationship, right? Inverse proportion. So proportion is about comparison to say, if I do this to this one, what will happen to the other? You're comparing their behaviors, their effect on each other, right? So it's always important when you're looking at two different quantities, what effects they have on each other, right? Increasing incre increase in the speed uh, between point A and point B results in a decrease in time spent. Now, this example, if you look at it nicely, you're saying if you increase the speed, what's going to happen to the time? It's going to decrease. So speed and time have an inverse they have an indirect relationship, right? If you increase the speed, the time decreases. If you decrease the speed, the time increases. So look for examples where this applies in your life and try and model it mathematically like what we did with the oranges. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Unleash your mathematical genius today. If you have any maths questions, you can post them for free on www.mathsgenius.co.za or email them to info at mathsgenius.co.za.